Hi and welcome to the fabric collection. I'm going to show you how the material parameters work for the fabrics. Let's start here with this wool as an example. At the top here you've got material type which is set to dielectric so this is a non-conducting uh, material. If you turn this off you'd get access to metallic values here so you could enable a metal mask or you've got a metallic multiplier. Because this is wool we're going to turn that back to dielectric. Uh, next up is some UV mapping control. The top one here is a simple multiplier where you can multiply the UVs followed by offsets so in case you want to slide those UVs along in the X or Y and Finally, some scaling values in case you want to squash or stretch the UV coordinates in any way. After UV mapping, we've got some base color control. At the top here, we've got some brightness uh, multiplying. So if you want it a little brighter, a little, little darker, just be careful not to go too dark. You might go outside PBR safe values. Following some brightness control, we've got some colorization. Uh, we can just do a simple color multiply across the material. As well as simple colorizing, we've got hue shift control. So if you want to slide those hues along if we've got a little parameter here to slide the hue hues along as well as all those normal colorization control we have gradient mapping uh, so gradient mapping uses a black and white gradient mask as well as a color lookup table uh, which looks something like this which is 14 color gradients so all of your primary colors your secondary colors and black and white and what this is is a more sensitive way of applying color to the material uh, you can see here with this cotton if i were to just apply say green or yellow it applies across the entire material however if we use gradient mapping you can see where i've used gradient mapping to apply color in a more sensitive way so the color application is a bit more sensitive and i can do things like inverting the mask so here the the thread is pink and the gaps are white, whereas normally here's the inverse. After gradient mapping, we've got enable fuzzy shading. This is Epic's fuzzy shading model, so you can fake the depth of the material. So here if I add a little bit more darkness, it feels like the thread is a little deeper, as well as brightness control on the edge. So this is like fuzz on the edge of material. I've entered values that uh, look correct based on the materials at hand. The fuzz power just controls the fall off of that fuzzy effect. After fuzzy shading, we've got a simple normal multiply in case you want to pop those normals a little bit, as well as a roughness multiply. So a lower value here will be uh, less rough. So if you wanted to do, say, some wet materials, you would use this roughness multiplier. A higher value is obviously more rough. The metallic values, as we said, are not accessible to us because this is a dielectric material. Some of the materials have metal thread in them, so this will be uh, enabled. After our metallic section, we've got emissive, in case you want to add a little glow to your fabrics. Say if you want to simulate, say, a lantern, we can invert the mass that's being used. We can decide whether or not we use a texture. By default, we're using the scattering map from a subsurface to mask the effect. We can obviously change the color of the emissive, the power, say if we want a, a stronger power fall off on the emissive, brightness control, and a Fresnel effect, so if you wanted to fall off towards the edges here, uh, we've got this Fresnel effect here, you can turn that off, you can see it's a much more even emissive. So moving on from emissive, we've got specular level, so with dielectric materials I've added in control for that little 4% uh, shift in uh, specular level that you can get with uh, dielectric materials. Uh, this is controlled by the specular range. This is just a very subtle control of the specular level. So say you might want to control the difference between polished leather and this rough wool. Following on from specular level, we've got parallax occlusion mapping. Uh, this is a fake effect to uh, simulate depth in the material. If you adjust this height ratio, you can see we can play with the amount of this effect. All the materials come with height maps to drive this parallax occlusion mapping. Uh, you've got your min step value and your max step value. Min step being the number of steps you see when you look straight on. Max steps at a glancing angle because you'll need more steps to fake the effect. The lower the number on the steps, the better because it does have an effect on performance. And also obviously the greater you increase the parallax occlusion mapping, the more steps you'll need to to fake that effect. The reference plane is whether or not it is pushing away from you or towards the camera. And next up we've got our subsurface color section. Uh, we've got two controls here. You've got the overall subsurface scattering amount and the mask influence. So this uses a scattering map to mask how the light travels through the material. These are captured from actual uh, scans. And down the bottom here we've got subsurface color. This controls the color of the light uh, passing through the material. 
Uh, if you have a quick look in the texture sec section, all of the materials come with an underscore SSC map. This stands for subsurface color. Uh, what this is is a very close uh, zoomed in capture of white light traveling through the material. So I use this uh, as reference for choosing that subsurface color just to get that extra bit of uh, realism. Following subsurface color, we've got ambient occlusion. Uh, again, using FX ambient occlusion, we can control how much this is influencing the material. You tend to only see ambient occlusion in the shadowed areas of a material. All of the materials come with an ambient occlusion texture. At the bottom here, we've got all of our texture maps. Depending on what material parameters you've enabled, different texture maps will appear. I've plugged them all in for you. Uh, I've done some channel packing here, so ORG stands for Opacity Roughness Gradient. All of the textures are supplied separately, however, so if you wanted to combine them in your own way, you can do and change that in the master shader. Down the bottom, we've got blend modes, so we can switch to masked. You'll see now we switch to a masked transparency. This is much more efficient than, say, translucent, and it uses dithered temporal anti-aliasing to smoothen the effect. We get nice light traveling through the material as well as shadows cast by the transparency. And if we come back up to our most uh, opacity multiplier, you can control how soft or hard this effect is across the material. You can switch from subsurface shading model, which allows the light to pass through, to default lit. The materials still look great, you just don't have the subsurface scattering in the shader. Finally, if you want to add that extra bit of uh, depth, you can switch from the Fabric Master to the Fabric Master Tessellation. And this just allows you to add some displacement, DirectX 12 displacement. Uh, you can go to distance control. So this adds true displacement to the surface as well as a tessellation multiplier. So this is the number of triangles that are being generated by the displacement effect. That's it for the fabric collection. I really hope you enjoy using the materials.